so I <laughs> responded to a, a post on Facebook. Um, what could you talk about for 45 minutes without any preparation? Well, screenwriting is one of the things that I said I could talk about. Probably movies. Um, and then how streaming has, is changing the industry. Why, why is streaming changing the industry? <laughs> and how can I talk about that? A professor of mine, um, a dear, very dear friend, and I would have conversations about streaming all the time, um, even after I graduated and had moved on to my MFA program, Dr. Kesey and I would still have these conversations. And it, it didn't occur to me at the time why or how streaming could actually really have an impact on the in industry. Um, it has an impact it's impacted uh, television and how we consume television. And with the pandemic, it's, cons it's changed how we consume um, movies. And I know one of the big things that we've, um, that's been in the news is Scarlett Johansson has sued Disney Plus. Well, in order to understand why that is, um, you might want to understand a little bit about how back end deals work. Um, I've only learned about this because I had um, a contract that was presented to me that to collaborate with another writer for a screenplay, and I wasn't getting paid. I wasn't getting paid up front. I wasn't getting paid unless the movie made money. What does this have to do with streaming and um, compensate? What does compensation have to do with streaming? Okay, here's the here's the deal with Scarlett Johansson's contract. It said that she got a percentage of the box office take. So say it was 10% of the overall, and they had projected um, Black Widow to do, say, you know, $500 million um, globally and domestically. That's, that's just a figure. It's not what it actually did. It's not. So she would get XYZ percentage of that. So say that she got 10% of that $500,000. What is that? That's $50 million or $500 million. That's $50 million that she was going to be paid in addition to an already agree agreed upon amount. That is how all talent contracts are done. It's not... The, the, and it's all based on box office release. That was before streaming. That was before a pandemic. That was before we had to alter our version of normal. So what HBO Max did is they went and they renegotiated with their their stars and their talent and said, hey, we're going to release on in the theater and in the um, on streaming. And this is what they call day and date release. A day and date release means that it's released in two places at once it used to be video on demand which is now streaming um, and if you have Xfinity you still have on demand but I haven't seen any new releases pop up on video on demand so video on demand is has been replaced by streaming so you have streaming and theatrical release where do you think they get more money well if you're Disney Plus every time you do a premiere release premiere access you have to pay 30 extra dollars in addition to your $87 and some odd change that you're being charged for an annual subscription. I didn't check the numbers on how many people have a Disney Plus, but it's a significant number. Significant enough that um, the parent, that the, they um, are making more money for themselves rather than their talent by releasing on day and date so that's one way streaming has changed the industry they talent is no longer going to be able to say hey we only have we're going to agree to this um theatrical release only or exclusive and the contract has to say exclusive um in order to be uh, for it to be a problem for the distributor and Disney Disney Plus is a distributor they um, 
are not just a production company or, you know, they don't pump out stories just to have somebody else distribute them and produce, produce and distribute. They are a one-stop shop for that. So if you ever have a contract placed in front of you that says that you are going to be paid on the back end with box office receipts, make sure that it, your contract says exclusive. Only this film or this feature will only be released in the theater to get your back end deal. No talent works for free. So they're going to have an upfront salary and then they're going to have their back end fee. That's how streaming has changed. Uh, the industry can't do that anymore. Can't say just theatrical release. You have to make sure that it, that your contract says that you get a portion of the proceeds from the uh, streaming service as well. Uh, what other people don't realize is contracts are kind of kind of picky. Um, George Lucas was smart when he did his contracts for the original Star Wars trilogy. He had in there that he got a portion of all the marketing. So all the toys, he got a percentage of the toys. He got a percentage of everything that was put out. He got a percentage. Why? Because it was in his contract. Contracts are a huge player in how streaming has changed um, the industry. And that's that goes for TV and movies. It's not just going to be um, feature films. Why is that? Because now we have services like Netflix. And Netflix was, in, was out when I was in college. Um, by the way, I graduated in 2014 with a Bachelor of Arts in English with a creative writing emphasis. I started, I started my college journey um, May of 2010 after I returned from Iraq. So there you have it. It's not like I was in college 20, 25 years ago when I got out of high school. I'm a newer college graduate. And then I went and I graduated in November of 2015 with my MFA in, in creative writing for the entertainment industry. That, if you wanted another video about, I can explain what that what that really is and what I can actually do. Um, but as far as streaming, changing the, the landscape of film, I think we, we kind of covered that with the day and date release. Um, and then Netflix, like I was saying, Netflix started out as a DVD rental service. How do I know? I had to get the DVD side so I could get some of my movies for my film minor because it was really hard to find things, um, especially classics. It was really, really tough. If the library didn't have it, I was kind of SOL. Um, but Netflix introduced streaming um, on your computer. And then with um, Moby TV, and that's another story with uh, that platform is how we are watching videos and, and content on our cell phones. And if you want to go Google Moby TV, it's M as in Mike, O as in Oscar, B as in Bravo, I as in India, TV. Um, or you can Google um, Jeff Anderson and uh, Paul Scanlon. They're the co-founders of Moby TV. But anyway, <laughs> they helped with this streaming revolution. They actually have won an Emmy for it. So there you go. It was a technical Emmy, not like a program Emmy. It's technical. But it's still amazing just the same. Um, with Netflix came, when they started shifting gears and not just acquiring other movies, they started um, doing their own original productions. Well, they had a brilliant 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 plan they drop all the episodes of a tv show at once so you can binge them disney plus takes a different approach they release weekly like a normal tv channel so their disney plus would gear up and get their um get their fans excited 
by saying, hey, we're going to release new episodes of this show every Friday. Well, when Loki came around, it's now Wednesday is the new Friday. They started releasing Loki on Wednesday. Guess what? Wednesday is still the new Friday because now they're releasing What If on Wednesday. I see a trend here. <laughs> but you have to have Disney Plus in order to see, you're not going to see these, these anywhere else. Just like Netflix um, has done. Another thing that they Netflix did was um, they do have some originals that they have released in theater. Not very many, but a few. And that's changing how we consume, um, especially with cutting people cutting cords to cable. Um, I have cable in my house still. That's a hard fought battle. Uh, I don't think we need it, but other people think we do. And it's mostly we keep it around for the um, local channels, but people are cutting the cord for cable because it's getting ridiculous. Well, unfortunately, everybody has an app these days, so you can either pay for it or get the free version. Free version usually have ads unless you're Hulu, and then you pay for the basic package and you still have ads. Ooh, Paramount Plus, too. They have um, their basic package. You still have ads in your shows. Why ads? Because the advertisers, like traditional TV, are picking up the other half of the cost of, of your streaming service, basically. Um, not that that's necessarily true, but if you're only paying six something for your Hulu and you have ads in your, your TV show, eh, you could go and spend and go up the next year and spend more and not get any ads. Well, that's okay. I can do a minute and 30 seconds of ads. Whereas on TV for a 25 minute program, you have five minute of ad, five minutes of ads and it's broken up. People don't like ads. So they go and they consume their streaming services and stream ad free on other places. Like they can wait for the whole season of Chicago Fire to hit Hulu if they pay for the Hulu with no ads. Or they can wait for it to hit the NBC app and watch it with no ads. No, does the NBC app have ads? I don't remember. I have it on our, t on our Roku TV downstairs, but I, I don't watch it. But I will tell you that streaming has definitely changed how we as a world consume our content. Um, TikTok's a good, great example. They break things down into bite-sized pieces. Unfortunately causing harm to our attention spans but that's okay i i love i love tiktok i'm on tiktok um it's more about other things on tiktok but there's a lot of great creators there um some of them were on vine some of them went from youtube to tiktok and then some have gone from tiktok and expanded to youtube well instagram is getting on the streaming thing and they have done reels which is you can create short form content, which is another way streaming has changed how we consume content. Nobody would have thought before to just consume one minute and 30 seconds of a skit, unless you're SNL. But that is just not, and you can do like, you can do the minute 30 seconds on reels and then you can do another minute and 30 seconds continuing the story and you're breaking it down into um, what used to be called webisodes I don't know what they're calling them now but webisodes were um, five minutes or less at least that's what I learned when I went to um, did my MFA program and if you go through some of the older YouTube content you can see that but a lot of people sit with their phone in their hand anyway so they're going to stream their content and they're going to stream all their their movies their tv shows right here in the palm of their hand or on their ipad or on their galaxy tablet or their galaxy note um it, it just depends on the person i still like going to the theater i'm still i still go to the theater i even though i consume content on my tv and I stream it because it's an internet enabled TV. It's a smart TV. Um, so I can, I stream there. As a matter of fact, my child and I have been binging 
um, Sailor Moon. We're watching Sailor Moon Crystal. Don't judge. It's actually, Sailor Moon Crystal is a lot better than the um, first two seasons that Deke did. But that's another, another thing altogether. It's just, it's streaming before you would have to go hunt down the DVDs. And I did when my child was younger. I hunted down the DVDs for Sailor Moon. But guess what? Now it's all on Hulu. Glad I still pay for Hulu. I almost canceled it, but she's like, hey, mom. All right, not a big deal. We'll keep Hulu. Um, I catch The Rookie on Hulu because I don't always get to see it on Sunday night. Um, and I don't, I don't DVR. So that's... That's another way that streaming has changed how we consume content. You don't have to wait until you, you know, have free time. Your DVR is not going to get full. You can just go say, hey, it's available the next day on whatever app for that uh, network. And bam, you have your content. You don't even have to go on demand like Xfinity still has on demand, which some of it's okay, some of it sucks. It's not like it was many moons ago when I first had Xfinity with when it was Comcast and they had on demand. It, it's just, it's changed so much. But the whole landscape of entertainment is changing. And unfortunately, the, the pandemic has pushed everything into fast forward, especially with day on um, day and date releases. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments um, and I will get to them as soon as I can. I hope this helps with why, how, why and how streaming has changed the inter entertainment industry. Um, it's, it's a subject that I never thought it would. I thought, oh, you have too many um, baby boomers who don't want to do streaming, but that's not true. Not true at all. Um, I like streaming. Streaming is great. I just being bringing it being a screenwriter, but I can't talk today. Being a screenwriter, it's frustrating for me to see what um, Scarlett Johansson is going through with Disney Plus. And I, when Disney took over and, and purchased Lucasfilm and all of the Star Wars properties, they did a lot of other things that were questionable. They voided contracts for people and stopped paying royalties for people and but that's a whole nother rant so so um like i said that's how streaming has changed day on day and date um binging dropping a season all at once um and that's just it, it, i know not 45 minutes which is fine because i can't um I would have questions in here from, from people, I'm sure, um, which could stretch this into 45 minutes, but I don't have enough video space on my phone. I only have 31 minutes and nine seconds. <laughs> um, I hope this was helpful. And like I said, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I can answer. If you want to find me on TikTok, it's V as in Victor, A S H J I N N. That's how you can find me. That's how you can find me on a majority of um, social media platforms because that's my personal handle. Um, I do not have a Kitiara Blue Media handle on anything but Snapchat. Um, and that's Kit Blue Media. If you want to find me on there and have a conversation about the industry and streaming. And um, I think streaming is kind of a positive thing in, in some aspects. It's it's bad when you know it's messing with somebody's payday, because let me get, let me tell you some writers don't get paid enough. Um, other writers, and you have people who want writers to do projects for free with the expectation of getting paid at the back end. Don't do it because if the project isn't viable and doesn't get sold and doesn't go into production, you won't get paid. That's another whole story, <laughs> completely another whole story, but. Streaming is okay. Uh, just, you know, if you, there's something you want to see in the theater, go see it in the theater. And <laughs> theaters don't make their money on ticket sales. That goes to the distributor and the production company. And whomever else holds the rights to that film, if it, especially if it's a, a foreign film. Um, 
movie theaters make their money at the concession stand. Doesn't mean you have to go to the movies every week. If you need to save up your money and go and have a special treat once a month, fantastic. Just because you stream does not mean that you should stop supporting your local movie theater. Without your local movie theater, you have people without jobs. Um, true story. But streaming has definitely changed the industry. Like I said, leave your comments down below.